this damn phone was awesome when I got it, and uh, now it doesn't fucking focus like it used to, it doesn't do shit, all of a sudden, um, it'll just fucking be dead halfway through the day, I'll, uh, and, and it used to, well, it used to last halfway through the day, and I'd have to charge it, and I've got a battery pack and shit, and now by fucking 10 in the morning, it's dead, and I'll, I'll fucking do the uh, left thing and close all the apps out, and um, they'll all be closed, and then all of a sudden the fucking phone will be in my pocket and it's hot and all the fucking apps are open again. Um, I swear to God, they just fucking add in all kinds of bullshit as you've had the phone for a while and it kills the phone. I've had people at phone stores tell me that. I've had dudes in the phone industry tell me that. Yes, every time it does an update, it fucking takes a little, you know, it just fucking kills your phone. They do it intentionally, so you have to get a new phone. Um, anyways... Uh, Wednesday night, is it Wednesday or is it Thursday? I think it's Wednesday. And, um, just heading home. So let's talk about, um, service. Good service, bad service. Um, went to dinner tonight. There's a place called, uh, Blues Landing here in town. It used to be Mia Miles. And, uh, the service was really good. They had a little girl working there named Bridget, and she was fucking awesome. And uh, she really took care of us. We went there a lot because she was the server there. We would go and uh, make a reservation for 12 people. And on nights she didn't work, we tried going there, but they just had a bunch of younger girls working there that were just fucking shitty waitresses. They just fucking were there for their minimum wage or whatever it is these girls are making and didn't fucking do anything to get any kind of tip beyond that. Bridget didn't really fucking seem to work hard. She just acted like she fucking cared and she was just cool. And we would go there and it got to the point when we would ask uh, for her to be our server and they would tell us she wasn't working. We just wouldn't come in. And uh, for a while she didn't work there at all. And we went probably eight, nine months without even going there because the service was so fucking poor and the food had kind of gone downhill and they changed the name of the business. Well, we were going to go back there uh, we hadn't been there in a while. We were going to head back there. And the driveway down the place from there, the next drive, said Mia Miles. And Amanda goes, are we going to Mia Miles or Blues Line? I go, I don't know. We'll drive over there and let's see what it is. So we went in there, and the service was excellent. Our server was fucking phenomenal. Like, he should be working at a, a much higher-end restaurant. And because of him, we went back there again tonight. So in the last... I don't know, seven, eight days. Well, there's an armadillo. Last seven, eight days, we've been there twice now. And um, our tab's, you know, 250, 300 bucks, which is, you know, decent. We got, you know, two dozen oysters, two dozen shrimp, some crab. Everybody ordered what they wanted, took the guys out. Um, but the dude has good service. The food is good. The restaurant is good. The, the bartender's fucking awesome. Um, but it comes down to good service. And people say, You know, we have so many customers, especially repeat customers. We're fucking millions of dollars of sales. We're over five million this year, I think, already. Um, But we're about to break 100,000 orders on this order system, which has been in place for two years, maybe two years, right? Maybe a little little more, maybe a little less than two years. In two years, we've done 100,000 individual customer orders. And you got dudes all over the Internet going... Talking, and I see it mostly on fake belts, fake S belts, you know, that are like ours. And people will tag in and go, hey, that looks just like an SOE belt. Or, hey, um, do you have the SOE warranty? Or, hey, do you have, um, you know, um, just all the different questions. Mainly that looks like an and I'll get tagged in there. And I'll just read the comments. And it's usually some gun reviewer or some YouTube channel. He's like, yeah, I just don't like how they berate their customers. Their customer service is really poor. And the guy copying our shit, he's got 5,000 followers on Instagram and, you know, has a few hundred followers. You know, it's some new dude just doing what we do. And when guys get into the sewing business, of course, they always copy the belts first and then the slings. Because those are really the two most, you don't have to have skill to sew them. I could teach any high school girl off the street how to make those products. And, um... That's why they do it, because it's the most easiest. Now, we've got people that make those products within our business that are fucking highly skilled. We can build those belts in four minutes. Um, 
and we do a contrasting thread and that's really where it gets more complicated that's not to subtract from my employees making those products um, we we can make you know our girls make a hundred of those belts in a day typically we always have thousands of them on order open um, but the guys that copy our shit they always are tagged up with somebody who doesn't like us and that's kind of their marketing scheme we have enough dudes that we have fired or turned away or just their friends don't like us that they can stay in business the guy who doesn't like us even though the belt is a lesser quality you know made with lesser materials they can stay in business on our crumbs on on our garbage and uh, that's the deal for every I can take a 10% ratio uh, loss, but it's not 10%. For every one of those dudes talking shit, those are the most heated conversations. And those conversations will have thousands of viewers. There'll always be a fire if it's on a forum, you know, hot topic um, to the side. If it's on Facebook, it's been shared, you know, 400 times. But people know, like, they see it, the name, over and over and over. And with that comes... In all of those threads are the guys going, man, I ordered from SOE and I got my shit in 72 hours, or I ordered and it's the best product I've ever had, or I ordered and I like the product so much I've ordered, you know, 10 more times from them. It's because our service is fine. It's just you're a shitty customer. And, and it's not... And truth be told, if you know these guys making these comments, this isn't the first time they've posted shit like this. It's because they truly are shitty customers. And they have fucking 20 or 30 stories like this. And yeah, if you went out on the internet, you could find probably without any without any effort, you could find 100 stories where, you know, John Willis was an asshole and, you know, he told me to eat a dick or he told me to fuck off. 90% of those guys, 90 of those 100, started as a shitty customer and had some fucking shitty tone, or I demand this, or, you know, I expect this, or I paid for priority shipping, how come my order hasn't shipped? Every now and then, we'll get a couple of them dudes, and I'll just fire the next dude that goes, where's my order? Well, motherfucker, you just emailed me. In your email, it says 8 to 12 weeks. Your order's fucking two days old. So we'll just dump those guys. And it's not because I'm fucking angry at them. It's because it ignites those guys. Those same dudes that don't read, the same impatient motherfuckers that don't read, are the same guys that will make it their mission to fuck my company and myself. That's their, that's their only recourse they have as well. It's just human nature. When you're slapped, you want to fight back. But these guys are a little fucking pussy, so they're going to do it on the internet. And they don't realize that when they do that, those are heated topics. When a dude posts something about SOE, man, I just ordered this, and I literally had this in my fucking mailbox the next day. We get we get hundreds of those. Literally hundreds of them. I get emails all the time thanking us for it. There's dudes posting. Nobody ever comments on them. They comment on our page. Every day, there are dudes up there commenting. Right now, if, if you look through the last hundred comments that a customer left up there, they're all within the last fucking 30 days. And they're all dudes going, man, this fucking product's awesome. There's no comments on any of their comments. Even when I share them and reshare them and put them on the main page, fucking nobody comments on them. Because people don't want to watch that. It's the same reason the fucking train wreck with the election. Motherfuckers like controversy. They like to be in a fight. It's mob mentality. So when I fire them dudes, they go out and they work for us. It's not that we have shitty customer service. It's they're a shitty customer. Our ratio, you know, when you look at that shit, you know, we fire a few of those dudes every month. Let's say it's 10 of them. We do 10,000 orders. I mean, it's fucking, it's, it's fucking, we have that, you know, we do 1,000 orders. We, do, we ship 1,000 belts a week. So let's say we have 2,000 orders a week. At 2,000 orders a week and we fire five, six, seven, eight dudes... That's less than a percent. I can live with that number. You pull those guys, they're all little motherfucking, they're all little bitches. So they all hang out in the little bitch club, whatever forum it is that they like. So you get that little bitch club forum and you got fucking 20 dudes in there that have all these fucking John Willis, you know, terror stories. That's because they're all fucking birds of a feather flock together. They're all in their same little clubhouse 
the you know He-Man Haters Club. So I understand it. We need those guys. And they spread our name and they put us out there and they fucking just get more sales and they allow us to fucking build buildings and fucking do the things that we do and hire the employees and our fucking family and friends that we hire and throw fucking, you know, $50,000 parties. It's those guys that allow that shit to happen and they introduce all that new blood to us, which become new customers, which come out and meet us and become new fucking, you know, SOE family. Once a week, somebody stops by the compound, and I'll go, where are you going? They're like, oh, we're going to the Smokies. We're going to Gatlinburg on our honeymoon. You're four hours out of the way. What are you doing here? We just wanted to come to the compound. We see you on Facebook. We happen to be, this was our chance to be in Tennessee. We wanted to come by. We meet guys like that every week. We have people like that. Uh, Wesley and his wife were over uh, today, met him from Facebook, found us from some dude talking shit. Uh, we interacted with him a couple times on Facebook. He placed some orders. I said, you come into Blade Show, man. I'd love to meet you in person because he's from Georgia. He came to Blade Show. We met him. He just got married, was in Gatlinburg, four hours, drove over to SOE just to come and see the compound. He'll be at the November 5th party. He's in our private groups. Um, a lot of you guys know him. Say hello to him. Fucking good dude. I like him. All that shit happens from shitty customers. So the thing is, if you make an awesome product, you know, you can't, you can't go firing a bunch of customers and not have a good service or a good product. We stand on, you know, 27 years worth of, you know, solid product. But the thing in all those threads where all those little guys are going, man, John Willis, he's so hard to deal with, or he'll just fire you, or he'll fucking take your money and not deliver your product. There aren't any of those dudes. We fucking, we've delivered the product. If we have your money, your product's coming and you ordered some shit that had no ETA. That means no ETA. That doesn't mean when you fucking think it's been long enough. No, it also said non-refundable. No, we won't refund you. So I don't, I don't know why you question that. But what you won't find in any of those threads is a dude going, the product fell apart or it's China stuff or what you will see is, yeah, I wait, you know, I waited a long time to get my shit but he makes the best shit. Even the dudes that don't like us will say that. If you see a guy saying SOE shit failed, he's blatantly lying. He knows he knows he's lying or he's just some dude who never has ordered. And 99, 99 out of 100, when a dude says he has some shit that failed, he can never produce a photo of it. He can never tell you what it was. He can never give you an order number. He can never prove that he'd actually ordered anything. Because if our shit's failing, I mean, we would want to see that. And of the 1% that can produce it, it was fucking caught in a boat prop. It got slammed in a car door and a buckle broke. Something like that. He never gave us the chance to fucking take care of it and fucking fix it for him. But that's all I got. Um, Man, I don't understand these motherfuckers that put their bright lights on. My lights are way fucking brighter than yours, dipshit. That's all I got. So, be a good customer. Provide a good service. Create something. Think about your job. If that job went away, literally, that that position ceased to exist. Whatever it is. What would you do? What skill do you have? What can you produce? How could you provide for your family? I'm in the sewing business. If we couldn't 